Greetings, everyone. This is I'm Right. I'm Right. And I'm Jill Cox Cordova. I'm Anthony Cordova. Shout out to one of our listeners, Coyote. Hey, Coyote. Hey, Coyote. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're shouting uh, Coyote out because he uh, responded to our episode about uh, baggage. And if you want to mm-hmm. see that comment, he, he wrote a comment. Um, go to uh, the site where our podcast lives, which is jillcoxcordova.com. Hmm, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Shows you how many, how many times I go to that site. You've never been to my site? <laughs> like once. Have you been to it since I updated it? No. Shame on you. Well, you tell me so much about it. I, I, I kind of know. I already know. But it's different than seeing it. Maybe you're that's very, what this episode very, should be about. It's supporting your mate. That's what our episode should be about. But it's not. You're very descriptive. So it's like I've seen it. But that's not the same as seeing it. Don't we have a show to do? Another episode? Listeners. Don't we have an episode tell to Tony do? Tell Tony he needs <laughs> to look at my site. Don't we have an episode to do? Yes. But listeners, tell Tony he needs to look at the site. So let's let's get with this episode. <laughs> How about it? The episode this week is when you've built a wall. Mm. So we're talking to all those wall builders out there. Okay. It's part of a segment that we call Stand by your stands. Have you built any walls? That can't be torn down. I was going to ask you that. Oh, I've well, definitely well, well, built actually, walls. Well, actually, <laughs> actually, I think, um, so we're all on the same page. What is building a wall? If you build a wall, this, what, is this an emotional wall or is it a brick wall or is it a, a fence? What, what is it? Well, I, well, first of all, to me, a wall is, is, a defense mechanism. It's to protect yourself, your heart, usually. So, so I envision like a wall? I envision like a cage around your heart. A you cage know? around your heart. Yes. So there you could peekaboo, you know, like you can see your heart, huh. but you can't get to it. Oh. That's how I have always envisioned my walls. Now, to answer your question though, some people make those walls out of brick. Which you should not do. Hmm. I'm learning things already. You are? <laughs> yes. I didn't know about a wall, a cage around your heart. A cage. Cage That's, is not a wall. I know. But some walls are, are peekaboo. My walls are peekaboo. Are peekaboo? <laughs> yes. You can see. You can see the target in, in my version of a wall. Okay. You just can't get to it if I if the if I have this cage around it. So I see my wall as more of a cage than an actual wall mm. that you you know you can't you can knock on it, but you know it's like something so close. You're so close to it, but you can't get to it. Okay, but let me be clear: we are talking about emotional walls, correct? Yes. Not a physical wall. Oh no! Anywhere? No. It's an emotional wall. If, so, if you want to call it that, so, sure. So this emotional it's a, it's wall a safeguard. To, is to keep you safe from, yes. from emotional pain. From heartache. That's from why I envision it. That's why I envision it, it around your, your... Is it is it specifically heartache? For me, it is. You asked me what I envision. Well, you know, I'm so just... So what do you envision? I'm, well, um, yeah, I, I have in... Well... It's been a long time because we've been in our relationship for many, many, many years. So I I haven't dated since we've been married. That's good. (laughs) You've had dates with me, though, since we've been married. Yeah, but I'm talking about other people and meeting other people. Well, actually, it doesn't actually it doesn't. It doesn't only apply to dating. Yes, that's that's Um, what I mean. It's heartache. Yeah, but like someone hurts you. Yeah, but. Okay. But it doesn't have to be romantic. Yes. Well, 
um, as I've talked in previous episodes, that I had an issue with um, choosing the wrong wrong women relationship-wise. For, yeah, for me. Yes. But, you know, I, I did that. But since I learned I, I, I did that, now I'm like, I have this, I do have a wall. Against them. <laughs> that protects you from them. Well, it's it's like there's um it's hard for me to interact with people or have a friendship with a person that um has a mental illness that they refuse to get help for. So I don't have a problem with people that have mental illnesses, but when they when they have a mental illness and they know the things that they do and they know they have a problem, but they will not get help for that mental illness, I put a wall up. To keep and is your wall something that they can go through like a ghost? No, or, they can't get through this wall. I'm done. So zip, it's a, zip, so it's a brick, done. So it, your wall is a brick wall. Yes, it's a brick wall. You're not getting through to me. It's not going to happen. I, I don't, I just, I can't do it. it. It's too emotionally draining. And like I said, it doesn't have to, it could be a friendship relationship. But, you know, if, if they know they have a mental illness and don't get any help, I have to put a wall up. Well, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a little bit. Okay. Although, you know. I say, don't listen to the devil, but <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to the devil. Devil's on my shoulder again, no, Jill. Just no, since you said no. that, the devil is sitting on my don't left listen to shoulder. The devil. Listen to I'm right. I'm right. I just do you see the little devil sitting on my shoulder? No, I he's, don't. He, he's so there. I just flick him off. He's just there. Flick him. Okay. Flick. Flick. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like that at all. <laughs> Thing. Well, Don't anyway. piss off the devil, okay? Or else what? <laughs> what you gonna do? Hey, you gotta watch what you're saying. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I'm I'm gonna play the other side of what you just said. Okay. So, you, if I'm if I heard you correctly, you said that when you recognize that someone has a mental health issue that they're not willing to get help for. Or maybe mm -hmm. they've gotten the help and they're not taking medication. You put up a brick wall. Is that what I heard you say? No. It, well, um, you're almost correct. Okay. If they know they have a mental problem and they don't get help for it, it has nothing to do with medication or okay. anything. Just okay. seek help for their issue. Okay. And if they don't do that, you have a brick wall. Yes. I put up a brick wall. So to play the other side of that, isn't it wrong of you to leave someone when they need help? Yeah, but they're they're not getting the help. I am not equipped. Okay. So they yeah. have identified you as their help. <laughs> no. You I, are their help. I am not equipped. And, and you know, I'm not a psychiatrist. I, I You're I'm not? not? No, I'm not. I'm not equipped. To help them with their mental illness, they need professional help. Now, yes, you can say, "Well, that's you know, that's wrong of me to uh, put a, a friend behind or acquaintance behind because they won't get help for their mental illness." But we talk about emotional scars. See, I still have emotional scars from being in those types of relationships and interacting with people like that. So I know that is something I do not wish to have in my life. It's just okay. bad. Well, I can respect that. <laughs> but is that the same as if they have a physical condition that they won't seek help for? No, is that the same? Say, no, that's absolutely not the same. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't dislike a person because they had a physical handicap. That's that they're not seeking help for. I, that I'm I'm just seeing what the difference. They is. may have been born with this physical handicap. They, they may have been born missing a leg. They How, may have been born they, with the mental health issue they, too. Uh, mental health, you can seek help for. 
So you, you can too for some I don't conditions. Hold, I don't hold anything against a person. I don't put walls against people that have a physical handicap. I do not. I do not do that. I would not ever do that. I'm not saying a physical handicap. I'm saying a condition that they could get help for and they're not. No, I'm specifically talking about mental illness. But what's what, the difference what, between that and a physical one? It's a big the, the difference. Con, the concept is There's, the same. The concept is not the same. <laughs> why, why are you going down this road, Because Jill? I'm trying to understand w- when you put up walls and why. Oh, let's say a person has a mental illness that uh, they could be in your presence and you could, you're driving in the car. You're just driving in a car, but they have this mental illness. The person with the men- mental illness is the passenger. Okay. So you're driving along, you're having a nice conversation. And then the, your passenger says, hmm. Look at the ground. Look at the yellow line. And they open the door and try to jump out. So as being the driver, I have to try to grab them and hold them. And you're swerving all over the road and cars are blowing their horn and you almost get killed because you almost have a head on accident with a truck. Because of this person's mental illness. Now. Maybe this is the first time you've seen it. So you say, hey, you know, what you did isn't right. You know, you need to really get some help for that. Now, if they said, I don't need any help, I'm fine. Okay. I back off and I put that wall up because I can't have another incident like that. I understand. I understand. And this story I tell you actually happened. Yes, I I understand that as well. I didn't think that that one was made up. Uh, So, okay, so what you're saying is you have, you put up brick walls when you face, when, when you encounter people like that because you've been burned or hurt by it in the past? Yes, because that's I'm, usually when people put up walls. Absolutely. So, you I'm, know, the I'm, wall wasn't always there. Yeah. The wall develops because of, yeah. of, what you've been through, your past experiences. Absolutely. So that's a wall to protect myself. But then sometimes people can put in wall, put up walls that really aren't to their benefit. Such as? Well, let's say, hmm, let's, let's, let's think of a good example. Give me a good example, Jill. Well, I mean, in the last <laughs> well, couple of uh, episodes, you have, well, you have brought up when, I put up a wall because you laughed at something I did. Yeah, but then, no, I, I'm not going to use that one. But let's <laughs> let's say, <laughs> listeners, did you all hear him say, "Give, yeah, me, an give me an example"? I yeah. give him an example. That wasn't like, the, no. That wasn't the example I wanted. I, I didn't. I didn't want that example. <laughs> Different example. So let's say, uh, okay, well, just use in general. Let's say you got in a relationship. And it turned out awful. This person really broke your heart. But then you say to yourself, that's it. I'm done with love. Never am I going to love somebody. Never am I going to fall for someone like that ever again. Now, this person will say, oh, I'm still going to date. I'm still going to have a life. But I will never fall in love again let someone get close to you like that exactly so i know a lot of people like that yeah so if you put up and i i don't think i've been that i I don't think i've had that particular wall i think that's why i have a cage is that deep down i still want it to love and be loved Mm -hmm. even if i said i'm never you know before i met you i said i'm never getting married again Mm mm-hmm well, but, but see, ne- saying I'm never getting married again is different than saying I'm never going to fall in love again. Because uh, you, know, you can fall in love and then just not get married. You yes, but you have married. to find the right you know? person that understands. Oh, that's, that's we can true. have a relationship, but that's we're never going to be like if I if, but, if you had asked me to marry you, know, you and I was like, no, I never want to get married. But Jill, we have learned uh 
actually from doing our podcast. And there are two of our friends that have uh, that believe in a unconventional type of relationship or marriage. Yes. Where they don't they have can to live get in married. The they could live in two separate houses, or two you know different states, and don't have to be. Um, you know, if they're married, they don't have to live in the same home together. Yes. Um, so, and that works. Yes. Yes. It is working for them. I still, I still don't understand it. And I can say that, but I mean, we're not that far off though. You said to me just last night, what, when, when we were talking about how well we sleep together, like we get our best sleep when no, we're together. No, it, and you it, said no. You it was, no. Let no, me finish, please. You, no, let you, me finish. You're not telling this right. No, you said no. The our relationship isn't much different. Yes, we live in the same house, but we're only we're we're not around each other as much as we are away from each other. That is true. So but that's that so is to not me, by choice. But to some people, that they couldn't even do what we're doing. I understand that's, that. But that's the point I'm making. Yeah, but if you don't want to so be... So to some people, we're if unconventional. If you don't want to be... No, that is not... Our relationship is not unconventional. To some people, it is, sweetheart. No. You're wrong on that. Some people think we have an I'm unconventional... Not, don't you, I'm right. I'm right. No. <laughs> I'm right. I'm, I'm right. right. I am not wrong. I'm right. That is not... Hey, some people say just, we're unconventional because we are you are not home every night. I am not home every night, but that's because you know, you're, you're usually only home on the weekend. But this is and you're right. It's not by choice. It's not by choice. But so I, we, didn't we make choose, it work. But we did not. It's one thing if I if we chose if I you know, if I met you and I said, hey, I love trucking and I'm going to be gone six months out of the year, uh, you know. Can you deal with it or not? That's making a choice. You would make a choice. I would make a choice. But our situation is different than that because of financial reasons. I had to get back on the road. So I did. So but it's only some, because the only I point I'm to. making, the only point I'm making is that for some people, they could not make it work. It would not work for them. That doesn't make it unconventional. To them, it does. But it's not. That's your opinion. No, You're entitled to your opinion. There, This is fact. <laughs> that is not this, fact. This, this is fact. No, it's it fact. is not. Yes, it is fact. It's fact. Clearly, you've built up a wall on it's, opinion it's versus fact. fact. It's, it's fact. Being, being, Get that little devil off your shoulder. Being married to someone that travels is not unconventional. Flight attendants are married. It's not unconventional. Yes, but Truck usually drivers are married. Pilots are married. Not unconventional. But when I met you, you were a truck driver. So yes, I understand that there's a. I understood, even though we said, "Oh, we're," you know, you made a promise to me that you would be home every night. And in the beginning, you were until out of necessity, you went back on the road, right? Yeah, yeah. but like, but like, I knew you were a truck driver when I met you, so I knew of that possibility. And the whole time we dated. You were home as much as you are now. You were home on the weekends. Only. No, no, that's that's not. You were only home on the weekends. That is not accurate. I only saw you on the weekends. You saw me on the weekends, but I was home during the week. You just didn't see me. Then why didn't I see you? Because you were at work. I was home during the day. Oh, okay. I was like, wait a minute now. <laughs> <laughs> And it worked very well. So see, quite often but, I was home during the week, now, during the that, day. Is that I had I knew that dating we why, were like that. Why are why are we discussing this? We're talking about because walls. I'm saying yes, because some people build up walls of what they're never going to do again. So some people, if they had met someone and they only saw them on the weekend, they may say to themselves, "I'm never doing that again." So yes. therefore, they have a wall. No, that's they not are a, not to me. No, a wall means you're that, not open. No, to, but that's no that's to someone letting that, someone in and change your mind about that something. is a little different. That's more of a <sighs> conscious choice. That's a choice. Some walls are choices. <laughs> oh yeah, people decide to put a a wall up, but 
some walls are not good to have up. Agreed. It's but like, some people still choose to put those walls up. They choose to put those walls up. Only put up good walls. What are good walls? Well, Give me an I, example of a good wall. Something I say. If I say it's a good wall, it's a good wall. What if is I say wrong it's a bad wall, today? it's a bad wall. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Something's wrong with you today. <laughs> Hey, I'm right. No, I'm you're right. not. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. No, I'm right. you're really not. I'm right. You're really not. Some right walls on this are one. good. Some walls are bad. Some walls. Some. Give me see, an example of a good wall. A good wall is the wall I put up. So you know, if someone, a friend of mine or something, has a mental illness and won't get up, I mean, no, won't get help. That's a pretty good wall for me. Well, one wall I that I've put up in the past that I thought was a good wall is, and it's it's a wall I still have up with not just you, but anybody. You have a wall up against me? We, I have said to you, do not raise your voice. And you'll say, I'm not raising my voice. And you'll laugh, right? <laughs> so I have a wall up against, because in the past, again, this wall <laughs> developed from a bad relationship. So not yes. with you, but the wall was, I was verbally abused. Yes. So, so when you, so I get triggered if someone raises their voice at me. Mm -hmm. Now my aunt once told me that I've never liked when people raise their voices, okay. that when I was little, 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 mm -hmm. you know, you could just, you know, like, no, no. And I might cry, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so maybe I've always had a sensitivity to it, Perhaps. but, but I really don't tolerate people who want to raise their voice at me because I, I believe that you can choose your words and still get the same point across without raising your voice at me or cursing at me. That does not, I, you will not get my attention sometimes, then. Sometimes, I will definitely. Sometimes, Jill, it's more painful when you use your words <laughs> instead of yelling at somebody. <laughs> how do you know? I don't yell at people. So how, how can you make that comparison? I've seen you in action. I've but seen how, is that how, worse if deadly, you've never... how deadly your words can be. You're words a word, matter. You're like a wordsmith. Words yes, matter. Words do matter. But I've seen you in action. But how do you know that I that's still, worse than if I just yell, which I, I don't do? I still feel sorry for my groupies, even though they were out of line. They were out of line. <laughs> you still, should feel bad for me. Whose no, side are you on? I feel, I feel bad for them because you really, oh, it was painful to watch. It was Painful. They were wrong. They were wrong. I agree, but but it was painful. All What's I want it? is to be respected <laughs> and to be seen. That's all I want. Isn't that what we all want? We all want to be loved after, and respected. After you after you spoke to them, there was a brick big brick wall, <laughs> and they didn't even see me anymore. They could no longer see me at all or speak to me because this wall was in between. That's not true. They saw you. They just knew not to go t do what they were doing. They wouldn't even talk. They saw to, you. They wouldn't even talk to me anymore. That's that's on them. <laughs> If you can't respect somebody when you talk to them, you don't need to be talking to them. That's on them. Ah, boy. But anyway, the point is, I I have a wall against people who raise their voices or try to curse somebody out. Verbal abuse. Yes, I do. Okay, I do. Where me? I can. It doesn't. It doesn't can, bother you. Yeah, I can handle some verbal abuse and and yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. They won't go there. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> gee. So, what? What else about brick walls? Are they all uh, brick walls? I don't think they are. Uh, Your first question was, are they brick walls? Are they fences? Yeah. yeah are they transparent? Yeah. Are they glass? You know, I was thinking about fences today. Why? You think about jumping over one? No, I was thinking about <laughs> fences make good neighbors. <laughs> uh, 
That's what they say. Our neighbor has a fence that I absolutely hate. Every time I see that fence, I just want to go like splash some graffiti on it. Go tag it. It's okay, chill. It's all right. It's but okay. why did you say that? It's okay. No, because I was I was really thinking about fences and and fences making good neighbors and and In is, what way? is that is that true? Um, is there some validity to to that statement? Fences make good neighbors. Well, I think, I think some fences, like, like when at my house that I owned before we married, I built a fence, mm-hmm. and I asked both neighbors, "Do you mind if I build this fence?" And, uh-huh. You know, because I had two dogs, so right. I wanted them to be able to run mm-hmm. around in the yard, and neither both neighbors didn't have a, a problem mm-hmm. with it. Um, but it wasn't like a security was, fence. No, it's it, just a normal, normal, a normal fence. fence. Whereas that people the, see the fence that our neighbor Georgia, has right wood, now wood is just fences. like, I don't, oh, I just ominous. don't. No, it's not ominous. It's more like keep out. Well, yeah, that's what people <laughs> people are I hate you, neighbor. Out. That's how I. That's how I see that fence. I hate you, neighbor. Okay. That's how I see that fence. Oh, oh. I'm saying them. They. They, they are uh-huh. saying that to us. Oh, okay. Well, that's... So I just want to go and tag it with some pretty graffiti mm-hmm. art. Then you would not be a good neighbor. They would probably never even see it. it would be on our side. <laughs> Well, we've got to get to our second segment. Yeah, I think we should. That we call. (laughs) Give it a rest and a resolution. Do you have a conclusion or resolution on walls? I was getting ready to say fences, but walls, roar fences. Yeah, sometimes walls, um, you know, putting a wall up to protect yourself emotionally can be good. Um, But sometimes it's not good. Just make sure when you create a wall, make sure it's for your betterment, maybe your mental health. It helps you get to a better life. Yes, make make sure that your your goal is for something better, not not for revenge or to avenge or anything like that. So that would be my conclusion as well. Let's get to our third segment that we call. I'm trying to help you. Advice? Yep. Sure do. Don't put graffiti on your neighbor's <laughs> fence. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. That's it. You can do it in the middle no, of the night. No, no, they no. probably would never even notice. <laughs> It'd be all pretty, uh, uh, pretty graffiti. Don't put graffiti. Oh, on it would your be fun. <laughs> that would be fun. Well, my advice is sometimes the fences are warranted because you do have to protect, as you said earlier, your your own mental health, your own... Fences or, or fen- walls. Fences or walls. Okay. Um, although I think fences are meant to jump, jump over, over. <laughs> oh, or put some graffiti <laughs> art on. <laughs> Uh, you but, have learned nothing. You've learned nothing this whole episode. <laughs> nothing. Well, my advice though is just just be aware of your reason and whether it's good for you in the okay. future as well. Okay. All right. Well, let's get to our last segment that we call. So, what, what do, do you think? think? What, what do, do you think? think? Because I'm right. Because I'm right. Phone number. Yes, and you can leave a text or a voicemail message at that number. And you can also do what Coyote did uh, and what Mary... And what Mary does uh, every week and leave us a written comment on on the site, which is jillcoxcordova.com. Yes, we love them also. All right. right, Well, we should close this out. Yes, that's it for this episode. Shout out to Gifford Ivan Cordova III for the music, Nick Zinke for the art, and thank you listeners. You've been listening to I'm Right. I'm Right. And I'm Jill Cox Cordova. I'm Anthony Cordova, and we love you all. We love you all. We love you all. You have a, you're having a hard time saying that, Jill. What's up with that? Do I really love everybody? (laughs) I'm still working on that. I'm still working on that. 
Well, listeners, I love you all. I will just speak for myself. (laughs) No, I appreciate you, listeners. Thank you. Love you. Love, love. Bye. Bye.